Venkatesh, thank you so much for coming on today and uh, doing this interview. Uh, I, I've been looking forward to this. We've been trying to sort of plan this interview for the last month, and it's sort of about time that we connected. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this um, and learning about what you're doing with the multiple companies that you have that you're working on. Um, but first, let's start with a quick bio and tell me about sort of your background and how you got into investing. Sure, Dal. Thank you so much for inviting. I mean, what you guys are doing in Startup Steroid is awesome. I've been watching the other interviews, so I think you guys are doing an awesome job. So happy to be here. As far as bio, I'll keep it quick. I can go on talking for an hour about it, but then uh, my, my background is uh, I'm from Mumbai. Uh, I did my engineering in electronics in Mumbai, and I did my MBA in Mumbai. I worked for almost seven, eight years in, in India. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in primarily on the sales and business development. I, I didn't code after my engineering or I didn't work on the tech piece. I immediately moved into a sales line because I thought that suits my personality. I worked in companies like HCL and IBM. I was leading some of the products in IBM uh, from a sales perspective within India region and then the Asia Pacific region. And then I came to the US. I'm probably one of the few people who came on a H1B on a sales visa. Uh, to the U.S. <laughs> yeah, in 2000, yeah. 2001. So it's been almost 20 years here. Uh, lived in New York, then New Jersey, and then came to California in Orange County in 2005. So almost uh, 16 years here. Worked in various companies and leadership roles and things like that. Moved from sales to leading companies. And 2016, I founded the uh, uh, multiple companies. So it was a natural... Uh, graduation from being in sales to leadership roles to founding my own companies so so that's the high level background yeah that's fantastic um so i know with ibm they have a really unique sales process and you yes. sort of uh, obviously trained with that i, I just want to spend a couple of minutes on that and sort of learn about uh, your lessons and the sort of lessons that you sort of bring into the venture world that you might have learned back then tell me a little bit about that experience Sure. I mean, I would definitely name HCL, which is a very famous company in India too, which is known for sales. So I got trade in the hardcore sales in uh, HCL. Uh, but what I would say is IBM trained me how not to sell, right? So, uh, you know, so I had to unlearn a lot of uh, selling and make it, make it more biz dev, as they call, which is primarily networking. Yep. So... That's, that's the key thing, takeaway, which I've been doing for the last 25 years, is co constantly network with people. I mean, um, you know, at a personal level, I, I, I'm like a, uh, some people call me a meeting machine or a calling machine. So I, I meet a lot of people uh, every day. I talk to a lot of people every day. So it's more of uh, networking and then not trying to sell. You actually sell when you stop selling. I mean, I hope it makes sense. Yep. You know, yep. uh, when you're not selling, that's when the uh, bigger sales happen. Yep. Uh, for a smaller sales, you need to push sales. But for larger sales, you just have to be in front of the people. They need to remember you. There has to be a, a recollection that, oh, that guy, right? Um, so uh, people know me with different names. Somebody calls me Venkatesh, sometimes Venkat, Venki, Ven. But <laughs> however they call me, the recollection is very important. Right. And that's what I learned from IBM more that don't push people, don't try to sell. Selling will just happen naturally, uh, gradually. Right? So. right. And that's such an important lesson for a lot of people because, right. you know, that, that's where the, the concept of sleazy salesperson, that, that right. really comes out, right? Um, right. You, you don't want to be the sleazy, sleazy salesperson. Mm -hmm. You want to naturally just build relationships. And when Correct. people need something, they remember you, they call you. Correct. Absolutely. Fantastic. So uh, let's sort of now, you know, you've sort of brought us up until 2015, 2016, when you were starting your own companies. Um, tell me right. about that experience and, and what was the sort of initial idea that you had in your mind uh, going after that? I was very clear, even uh, when I was working in my job, that I will be doing something in the tech industry, right? Um, I'm not, as I said, I'm not a hands-on technical person, but I do understand the tech. I do understand the B2B market. I understand the enterprise market a lot. I know how CIOs and CTOs or even innovation officers make decisions, right? So it was a natural thing for me to get into uh, the tech business. A uh, few things I was very clear is I don't want to get into staffing. Not that I'm against it. It's not my 
uh, core, uh, you know, experience right. or background or the value I bring in. So it was primarily building products and uh, launching products. Now I, I know that lots of lot of large companies uh, uh, and Fortune companies don't outsource products. They use you as a service vendor. So definitely there is a combination of providing services of uh, integrating products, um, more upgrading from a legacy system to a new system, uh, moving things to cloud because five, six years back, uh, cloud were just, you know, picked up. Yeah. So moving from a, a, a desktop to a cloud applications and things like that. So when I started, I started with that mindset and uh, it, it, it hit up pretty well. I mean, we, we had our first large customer within 45 days of uh, founding the company. Wow. So. Yeah, wow. yeah. So I guess building those relationships really did pay off. And, and uh, I'm guessing mm -hmm. those first couple of customers were probably uh, part of your network before then, right? Even now, we don't have a salesperson. I mean, we are, um, we, we are 110 people company, but no salespeople. It's just wow. through, um, um, through me, through referrals and repeat customers. So yeah, uh, network makes a big difference. That's why I tell a lot of young people, uh, focus on building network, right? Um, right. You can you can do a lot of things once you have a good network. Whatever business you start, right? So that's such an important lesson. That that's fantastic. The fact that you have a hundred and ten person company and no salespeople, it would be shocking to most everyone on the street. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, right. So tell me uh, that that initial. So you you knew you wanted to work in sort of the IT infrastructure type sure. of area. Uh, you touched on some of the companies. But how did you actually implement it? So how did you start building your team? How did you start uh, connecting, making you know the, that connection? For me, team is everything. So even before I founded the company, in fact, even before I kept the name of the company, I had my uh, leadership team. When I say leadership team, a combination of partners, co-founders, and also non-co-founders who are leadership people, right? Uh, in, in different areas. So I, I had my team ready even before I chose the name for the company. Wow, uh, okay. so, so that's because, uh, so as I told before, I'm not a hands-on guy. I can't write a code. I can't write right. an app, I can't build an app, right? right. I, I don't go to the server and do anything. So for me, team is everything. I'm dependent very much on the team for everything, right? right. So my team was in place even before I started. And that also was because of the network, because of the trust you have. Uh, and they are awesome people. They trusted me. They came up in a no salary or low salary with equity and some of them no equity. You know, those kind of different combinations that you bring in place. Yep. And I had the team both in the U.S. and India, even before the companies were in, incorporated. Uh, they were in their own jobs. We knew that we were going to work together. I was the only guy who had quit my job. And uh, with 45 days of uh, hustling, uh, through my network, I got the first project and pretty much could get all the leadership people out of their jobs to afford their salaries. Wow. You know, so, so, so that how, that's how it started. So it, I was the only guy and then got a project, got those right people who had already committed. Uh, they quit their jobs, they trusted me. And then the challenge starts. You have the first project, then you need the next one to keep them busy and the salaries to be paid. So one thing leads to the next and then uh, we've been lucky, we've been blessed and blessed and then, you know, it's been five years and it's, it's going well. So. Wow. Okay. So a uh, couple of things I want to unpack there. Uh, you mentioned having teams both in U.S. as well as in India. What was sort of the idea of that breakdown? Um, what, what's the team in India doing? How are they sort of supporting the team in U.S. or vice versa? Yeah. Right. So the, so the first company I started was Saguna Consulting which is all development company and ID company as it's called. Now, India was primarily an offshore development center, right? Like how typically it's been used. So uh, all customers from the US and India was offshore development center. Um, we got a couple of projects in the life sciences and the healthcare industry in the initial days. And we realized there's a huge market there uh, and a niche market, especially the life sciences and the biotech. Healthcare is big and broad. Yep. So, yep. But, but the life sciences and biotech are very niche and clinical trials, those kind of very specific uh, sub-industry or sectors, as we can call. Mm -hmm. There's a market. So what I did was I formed a separate company called HugeNX because I, I wanted it to be very specifically focused on healthcare tech. And, and it could have its own uh, exit strategy or growth strategy, right? So I formed a new company 
So what I did in India then is Huge NX team does a lot of research. Um, we, we buy a lot of wearables. We, we set up our own sort of a clinical trial lab, uh, uh, a testing lab, and then uh, do projects and do uh, research before we even go to the customer, right? Wow. So, so, so Saguna is more of a, a development company, which is more reactive, whereby we get a project and we deliver a project. Right. Huge NX is more of a proactive. We basically do a research backend and we go to a customer, we go to pharmaceutical companies, we go to pharmacies and say, hey, we can do this for you, right? Okay. So to, that's a long answer for your question. So India is, we, we, in, India started off as a development center, moved into more of a research for healthcare center, a research in the tech side, right? Uh, we bought Fitbit, we bought wearables, we saw how it can be integrated to different systems and then went with a solution to the customer. So it was more proactive than being reactive, right? And then we got into the India market. We have customers in India now also, right? Right. So, so that was the different stages of how India happened. So. Fantastic. Okay. So let, let, let's break down each of those. I know there are probably some founders who are in the audience who are in the med tech space. Uh, sure. So let's, let's try to understand that, uh, you know, essentially the R&D facility that you have in sure. India and right. what, what you're sort of doing with that. Tell me a little bit more about the team and about what kind of areas you focus on. So the, as I said, the healthcare is pretty vast, right? So, but then uh, the core focus we have is life sciences. When I say life science, specifically diagnostic laboratories, these are called reference laboratories, not the question, the lab for that we walk in to draw our blood. These are, these are, these are backend uh, laboratories where specimens goes from the hospital to the lab for any form of right now. We're doing a lot of COVID testing, but even uh, cancer diagnostic testing. So specimen could be swabs or uh, urine, blood, skin samples, tissues, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what, what we do in the research center in, in, in India is we basically look at the different samples that enters the lab. We look at what is the pain point. How does the, we go into how FedEx delivers the packet. What happens in the first stage? You barcode it. So every process in different industries, uh, we start researching it. So we, we hire uh, people from the industry, either on full-time or contract based on how we want them to be, or as a consultant, right? And then we get the process that happens in each of these uh, areas, right? And then we use technology, primarily development, software side. We don't do anything on the hardware side. Mm -hmm. So primarily software technology, and we see what can be developed, what can be integrated, and what can be automated. These are the three key buckets we put that into, right? What is the new development? What is the integration with the existing system? Like instruments, like instruments from Johnson & Johnson or LifeTech or Illumina. We do a lot of integration, Beckman, Coulter, right? And then the third one is the, uh, uh, I just said, uh, development, integration, and uh, what was the third one I said? Oh, I lost yeah. my chance. But then uh, that's, that's what the research uh, team does there, right? And then we, we proactively go and talk to the uh, uh, prospective customer and say, this is what the solution we propose for you. This is how we can make your clinical trial process efficient. This is how we can make your survey to your pharmacy customers more efficient, right? So, uh, and then HIPAA compliance, PHI compliance, any of the FDA regulations, we have a lot of knowledge of those things. So what, what I'm trying to say, which in the, in the uh, keeping the audience in mind for startup steroid is if you are a founder of a med tech or any form of technology company, Today, it's very important not to get stuck with the tech piece only, that I'm a Microsoft uh, provider or I'm a AWS provider. It is very important to understand the industry mm -hmm. uh, and then come up with a solution uh, to them instead of going and asking them. I, I call it, you, you can either go as a, a waiter in a restaurant and say, tell me what you want me to do, right? Right. Or you, or you go as a true consultant and says, I think this will be good for your industry. This is how we can save you money, efficiency, like in the laboratory space, just the last point, we, we improve a lot of turnaround time. It's called TAT, turnaround time. Mm -hmm. From the specimen, from the time the specimen comes to the lab from the hospital, how fast does the report goes back to the patient? Uh, whether they are COVID positive, negative, or their cancer diagnostic is positive or negative. How important is that to get back in six hours? The patient and the family, everybody's in anxiety. So, 
that can improve all this. So that, that's the area that, even though it's ultimately an app development or a web development, but that's just the approach that we go through uh, for the larger customers and also with right. startups. I mean, you know, we work with a lot of startups. So. Yeah, yeah. No, and th this is such a fantastic sort of having that broad overview, understanding the entire system, and then making improvements, you know, on every step of the way. Uh, right. I, I know you, you, we've talked about before, you know, uh, before the call, we've talked about a few uh, sort of uh, processes where you've essentially cut, you know, the, the delivery time of that report from seven days down to just, a, you know, two, three, four two hours. hours. Right. few hours right so it's it's pretty amazing what you're able to achieve with that kind of uh that, that big picture thinking so uh you know congrats on that uh, but let's let's go back and talk about saguna and uh, the it uh, piece of the sure. puzzle um because right. i think a lot of founders who are not in medtech space are probably interested in that as well um, right. so what's what's sort of uh, how does a client engage with you um, do right. they say I want this app built and then you build it for them, or do they? Is it does it start with a bigger uh, conversation first? It usually starts with a bigger conversation. As I said, um, I don't go through the regular sales channel of knocking the door and right. sales guy reaching out to right. So it's it's usually starts with a bigger conversation whereby I try to understand what's going right with them and what's not what they're not happy about. And and, uh, and and this applies to both the both the customer stream. When I say when I say client, clients are people whom we service, right? So it could be a large customer with a lot lot of IT budgets with them, or it could be a startup uh, founder who wants to build a product. Right. Um, we, we I, I engage with them first at the, at a level to understand their needs, and then I bring my team in. So we basically do a thorough understanding of what industry they are in. Uh, I, I, spoke, I spoke in detail about the healthcare and life science, but we are pretty strong on fintech. We are pretty strong on the auto industry, um, very strong on the retail and the e-commerce industry. So there are six or seven industries we are pretty strong. And all non-healthcare, we do it through Saguna Consulting, right? So, so we engage at that level, try to understand what they're trying to build or what they're trying to modify or what they're trying to upgrade and then come up with a solution. And then it goes to the Team size, durations, estimates. If it's a startup, we do a combination of cash plus equity, or some of the deals we just do equity and uh, and, and build a product and manage it. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So, a founder who might have a grand vision and has an idea can essentially sure. connect with you, and can you can essentially develop the entire back end for them. And uh, it may be a cash deal, or it may just be a pure equity deal based on what the founder is looking for. The, the three models that we engage with, as you said, just a pure cash model or cash plus equity, or it could be a cash plus revenue share because some of the founders don't want to give up the equity and we're not really trying to uh, suck the equity out of them because it, it becomes a problem sometimes for funding. Right. So, so we don't mind doing a cash plus revenue share. So if they do well, we get paid, right? Uh, but then, of course, we have a criteria where, where we select the right partners. Uh, right now, we work with 19 startups, uh, 16 in the U.S. and three in India. Uh, okay. So, right from the idea stage, we are, or sometimes even if it's not in the idea stage, they've already preceded and they have an MVP in place. But we can do right from the MVP to phase one, launch it, we maintain it. Um, I get on on their board if they need me to be part of, um, you know, all of those things. So, but then. Right. We develop the product, maintain it, manage it, manage it, customize it, go to the next level. So we're the, we're the extended IT and software team, basically. Right, right, right. That's a fantastic way to look at it. You're, you're essentially taking the entire uh, IT back office function out of the company, and you can essentially take care of all of those services. So the founders can focus on the core. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, right. So now let's talk about the third piece of the puzzle, uh, okay. which is actually getting the cash investment into the company. Um, now, I, I understand you have a third company set up for doing specifically that. Uh, right. Tell me a little bit about that. So that's a new uh, company. It's called Ventures Unlimited, which was just founded this year in 2021. It's been two months. Okay. But I've been working on that for the last six months. The reason for that was we, we are taking care of the entire spectrum of their IT, their product, their CTO requirement, their co-founder requirement, 
being on their pitch decks, being on their pitch presentations, you know, giving confidence to the investors for even uh, scalability, security, and all those questions that they have. The missing puzzle was basically money, right? So I, I, I thought, uh, why not get into that and, and, and provide investment to the startups that we work with also. So the Ventures Unlimited to start with now, it may change two years from now, but for now, Ventures Unlimited is primarily funding those companies which basically has the technology piece working with either Saguna or HugeNX, one of the two IT companies that I have, right? Uh, because that's the value I want to bring back to those people who trusted us and we worked as a partner, right. saying, hey, I can bring you money for that, right? So, so Ventures Unlimited primarily is investment. We are looking at a... Uh, minimum investment of 1 million to the startups. We, we're not funding anything smaller than that. Mm -hmm. um, and then funding both the uh, India-based startups and the US-based startups. Fantastic. So, as I said, to start with, it is for those companies which is working and partnered with us on the technology piece. Two years down the line, it may operate like a typical VC, which will be funding other companies too. So. Got it, got it. So this is sort of a VC... Uh, fund in the making, <laughs> uh, if you would. Awesome. Uh, yeah. But I, I really love the fact that if a founder comes to you and right. uh, needs, you know, essentially he's at, a, at an idea stage, he has this grand vision, you can essentially start by providing them the IT infrastructure, but then also you have a source of funding that you can essentially start to fund right. The, right. the startup and help them build a team or whatever else they need, right? That's Absolutely. the vision. That's the vision. They just focus on their... Um, business operations, their legal, their marketing, uh, you know, those things. The IT and the funding we can take care of, yeah. That's fantastic, okay. So uh, you, you said that as of right now, you're working with about uh, 19 companies, is that right? Right. Okay, so what's the vision for 2021? What, what, what's the next step for you? What do you want to achieve? So uh, honestly, uh, double. I mean, we didn't even know if we would be able to uh, make this happen because uh, when I got into the startup uh, uh, side of the business two years back, uh, we signed up with a couple of startups at, at no cash, all equity, and then um, they had no interest working with us and it failed. We lost a lot of money because we invest in people. We have our developers, our testers, tech, and all of those. We set up the internal servers for them, the dev environment, the testing environment. So we, there's a lot of investment that we need to make for every client or every startup. Right. So I, I learned the hard way of how to partner with the startup, right? So that it's a win-win situation, right? right? So, so that learning has got us uh, this far. Uh, so I didn't have a number in my mind and how many startups we would work with, right? Uh, now with, with this experience, right now uh, for 2021, it's a different way. I, I get calls almost every day, either from India or here. I mean, India people WhatsApp me, right? So... <laughs> So I, I get reached out a lot from a lot of startups right now. So uh, what, what we are doing is we are talking to them and we are basically trying to get the right right match. I, I won't say no, anybody's good or bad. It just has to be the right match. Right. So, so I, I'm looking at to give you a number, not for 2021, but for 2022. I want to take it to 30 startups by the end of next year. Got it. So right. add maybe 10 to 12 companies to that. 10 to 12 in the next two years. Right. Because for us, it's a big, big risk. Right. We, we invest in people. So uh, constantly what I'm doing is larger customers, Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 customers are the people who gives us the profit, the money. Yeah. And I am I'm moving that that money profits into working with startups. Right? right. Hoping that one of them or few of them would click in the long run. And, and also, uh, I mean, uh, this, this country is built based on somebody took a risk on some founder, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was another thing that when I saw two years back that a lot of startups were having a tough time building an MVP because they needed money to do it and nobody was uh, willing to do it on cash, uh, on, on equity, right. right? So that was the thing we started off saying, hey, don't worry about it. We will build it for you. If you, if you click, we click. If you are vested into it, right? So, right. So yeah, so that, that's yeah. such a fantastic model because uh, you know you're you're essentially becoming the founder's partner, right? To yes. to to a large extent, uh, and uh, if they win, you win. If they lose, you lose. Right. So all the right. incentives are aligned. What, 
One point I'll make on that, you, you, you really said the right thing, we're a, we're a partner with them. And what happens, a traditional software company would like to have a long-term uh, project, right? They want a six-month project. When we work with a startup, we try to do an MVP in one and a half two months to two months because we don't want to invest too many people on it for too long a time because I don't make money out of it. And they want to launch it quick so that the investors and the market sees it fast. So that it's a win-win that we, we knock it off and launch it like in a very short span of time uh, and move those, move on my team into our next startup to work on, right? So Exactly. And that's what I mean by, you know, all the incentives are aligned, uh, that everybody's trying to do the same thing and pulling the card in the same direction, which is fantastic. Right. Right. Um, right. Now, when you go through this process, let's say you're looking for 10 to 12 companies over the next two years, what okay. are some of the key things you look for from founders, from the idea, from the company itself? What, what, what's, what's top of mind when you're analyzing a new uh, project? Topmost is the founder or founders, right? Their, their energy, their enthusiasm, their passion, right? Yep. Uh, that that they, they are, they, they're willing to go above and beyond to make it happen. How much does this startup mean for them, right? Mm -hmm. So for me personally, before my team gets involved into getting into the uh, uh, idea stage or t talking about the business and forecasting and things like that, for me, I need to talk to them in person on a video call or meet them in Starbucks to really feel the passion. I need to feel that energy from them, right? That's, that's what I see. Uh, and it's not about communications. It's not about the language they use. It's more about how much passionate they are. If somebody comes to me and says that I'm going to try it for two months, if it works great, if not, <laughs> then it's, it's a no-no for me, right? Right, right. So, um, how much are they willing to stick their neck out? It's not about the money. I, we don't want them to sell their home to make a startup. It's more of how much passionate they are. So right. that's the number one criteria to even move to the next stage, right? Yep. Um, and then uh, like any other investor, I prefer startups which has more than uh, one founder, right? Um, it, it helps a lot. If there are two or more, it's always better, right? Yep. Yep. So... Uh, but that's the number one. After that comes the idea. After that comes the uh, forecast, the business plans, and, and the competition, all the other regular pitch uh, that, that happens. Right, right, right. right. Um, when, you're do when you are looking for founders, uh, are there any specific things that are sort of red flags for you? If they're too young, too old, if they have had exits before or not have that, any specific things that, that mm -hmm. you can sort of highlight? No, my, I mean, too, since you brought the age, age factor, the, uh, the oldest founder CEO we have is uh, 68 and the youngest is a, is a junior in uh, Cal State Long Beach. Wow. <laughs> okay. Right? So, yeah, because, uh, because I'm part of the uh, mentor group in Cal State Long Beach, I mentor a lot of kids in the entrepreneur department uh, who wants to start up. So, yeah. Right. So age is not the criteria. Their past experience of having a startup or owned a business is not the criteria. It's, it's it. primarily their passion and uh, why do they believe this is going to work? Have they thought about it like a consumer if they're in the B2C market? And if they're in the B2B market, have they thought about as a prospective customer? Would they use this product if somebody had launched it, right? Right. Right, right. These are the criteria that I have. Why are you building it? I mean, wh what are you, why are you trying to sell this? Why are you trying to market this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the questions I ask personally from my side to see with, if they fit into that. If they're very passionate and, and uh, if that's an idea that I may not be believing today, but if I can sync with their vision, right? Right. Um, that's when I introduce them to my team who then goes to the other, other sets of questions and uh, the experts in the team, right? So, Got it. Got it. So you're really looking for that passion uh, to come through and they have to paint that picture of the future where right. they're going to rule the world, essentially. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK, fantastic. So now uh, you, we already talked about the industries. You highlighted a few industries that you really prefer, a couple of others that are sort of secondary. Uh, what else, what other criteria is, is important as far as IT infrastructure, as far as uh, any other aspect of the business that, that you sort of uh, look at? It might be secondary, treasury, but uh, some, something that you like to focus on. I would say the, the extent of market research they have done. 
I, I see a lot of uh, founders, they, they're very passionate about their product. Uh, they, they research a lot about how they can build that product or market their product. But they've done a very uh, mediocre research, research on what's existing in the market. Hmm. So as soon as a founder, if I ask a question, who are your competitors? And they say, I have no competition, then it's a red flag for me, right? Okay, got it. They, they, they can say that there's nobody similar to us. We are unique in these perspectives, but it's not even possible that there's no competition for you, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, was there no competition when Netflix came? No, <laughs> Dish Cable is a competition. They may not be an OTT, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I, I remember a very interesting uh, uh, quote from the CEO of Netflix about, you know, this is six, seven years ago, maybe even more. Uh, but someone asked him and they, you know, they went through all of the usual competitors. And the Netflix CEO at the end said, you know, our biggest competitor is sleep. Right. <laughs> so, you know, if you say you have no competition, then yeah. you're obviously missing something. You're missing something. You've not researched it enough, right? Right. Right. You're taking, taking the market for granted. You're taking the audience for granted, right? Yep, exactly. So that's the, uh, whatever industry they are, because I, we may not be an expert in all the industries. So we, we try to learn from the founders what research they have done, mm-hmm. right? So that's very important. So uh, industry and vision and all of those, their forecasts, their numbers, it's all great. But I see a lot of people have not done a lot of research on their competitions or the market and things like that. So, Right. right. That's fantastic. So uh, I think uh, I, I've asked you a, lo- a lot of questions. Has, is there anything else I've left off that you want to cover in this interview? I no. want to sort of open it up for you. No, I think you, you, you've done great. You've done, you, you took a lot of uh, things out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, one, one uh, I always like to end with an action step uh, for the founders who are listening. If right. they are looking to connect with you, if they are looking to uh, uh, have you as an investor or, uh, or uh, a partner in their company, mm-hmm. what yeah. is one thing that they absolutely have to have? You know, we talked about a lot of different things, market research, passion, et cetera, et cetera. What is one thing without which you won't even answer the phone? You won't even uh, reply to their email? Open to talking on the phone. Honestly, okay. you'll be surprised though, that a lot of people are so comfortable just uh, sending emails and text messages and forwarding pitch decks. For me, the most important thing, if somebody says, are you free to talk? I'm, I'm there. So they, for me, the most important thing is they should be uh, willing to talk. They should be willing to come on an online meeting or willing to, if they're local, meet me locally, right? right. So uh, that's the most important thing. And, and what, as I said, whatever stage they are in their idea stage, they're a kid, they're a student, they're uh, working right now, whatever they're doing doesn't matter. Uh, what's important is they need to be able to talk, come on the phone, meet in person if need be, and be able to explain their idea, uh, be able to explain their vision more effectively. That's all that's needed. So. And answer the questions. Answer the questions, yeah. They, uh, Absolutely. And, and I know exactly why you're asking that <laughs> after the conversation we just had. You know, you want to see that passion, right? That come through on the, exactly. on the call. When you, when you speak to them, you can hear it in their voice. Or when you see them, right. you can see it in their eyes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Rekitesh, thank you so much for coming on today. I really enjoyed the conversation. Mm-hmm. I really uh, enjoyed sort of understanding your process. Uh, and uh, I hope to uh, see you on the golf course soon. So. <laughs> Good. Absolutely. Thank you, Dawal. Thanks for the invitation. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.